sometimes finding solar filters for your regular telescope, such as this Nexstar 127 SLT, can be kind of difficult, as there are some companies that just make film ones, there are some that make glass ones, but the problem is, is that sometimes they're really costly. Well, I'm going to show you a cost-effective way to make your telescope into a solar telescope. As always, thank you so much for joining me again. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Max. I like to do telescope reviews, how-tos, and astrophotography from my front yard. I am by no means a professional, but it's all about having fun, and it's all about the experience of getting under the night sky and just enjoying yourself while under the stars. And today, it's really no different. We're just out during the daytime under our star instead. But the question that I get a lot is, where do I get a solar filter for my piece of equipment? And sometimes telescopes aren't really a great size for solar filters. For example, Celestron makes a solar filter for their 5-inch SCT, but not the Nexstar 127, which means you have to go fishing around the internet for other options. Today I'm going to show you how to take your regular telescope and make it into a solar telescope by using the Explore Scientific Solar Catcher Kit. Now this kit includes the solar filter itself, some foam pieces that we're going to trim down to the size of the optical tube. It's going to include a template which we have to measure our optical tube. And once we're done though, it'll be a fully customized solar filter for the end of our telescope. Now this will work on anything between four to seven inches for the specific one that I bought, but you can get them up to a 12 inch aperture. So they will fit with any optical tube as long as it's bigger than four inches, but less than 12 inches, depending on whatever telescope you want to use. So let's get to it. Having the package fully unboxed here, we have the solar filter, which you can get this diameter in different apertures. I chose the four and a half inch, just to give it as close to a full aperture to my five inch Mac as possible. We have the foam wedges in which you double-sided tape inside and then you cut down for your size of your optical tube, the template, and then some of the double-sided tape that you're going to attach these foam pieces to on the inside of the solar filter. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to attach those foam pieces here on the inside, trim them down, and then your end of your telescope tube will fit right here on the end, which is why this sun catcher is designed for a four inch to a seven inch, because with the wedges all the way in, it would be a four inch full aperture. And if you cut them down to where they almost are at the edges, that would be a seven inch aperture that you can fit this on. So this is very versatile as you can get different sizes of this box that uh, will accommodate different size optical tubes all the way down to something as small as a camera lens or something as large as up to a 12 inch uh, aperture for a Dobsonian, I think they sell for one of these. So pretty nice of Explore Scientific to offer kind of that universal kit to make uh, all the different sizes. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and bring the optical tube over. You can see it says 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12 inch apertures for the different sizes of the box. Mine is the 8 inch box. If we lay it right on top like that, you can see it lines up perfectly with the 8 inch box. But because we have a 5 inch optical tube, we need to draw the line here so we can start lining up our wedges on the edge so we know where to cut them. I've got my optical tube here. We're going to set it right on top the best we can. We're going to center it up in this little ring here that we see going around because this is the six inch ring. So we're going to want to try our very best to get it centered on that ring because that's what we're going to be cutting our wedges to. So we're just going to center this up. I think that looks about right. And we're just going to take our Sharpie. And we're just going to go around here. And now we've created our own OTA. You can see that this is where my OTA sits inside of this. 
The next step here in our process is that we take our wedges. You see where the points for the box are. We're gonna take our wedge just like this, put it up against the edge, and then we pretty much have to find where our optical tube comes in. So our optical tube is kind of like this through that wedge. So we have to mark each one of them for that curve. Now we'll just cut these Now that we've got all four of our wedges cut, what we need to do is flip over the box here. And we are going to install with our double-sided tape all of our wedges in our corners here. Now that one will fit in there and we're gonna take our double-sided tape here. We've got four pieces. We're just gonna peel one of them off. We're going to stick it on the back, peel off the backer, and then we install this wedge onto that arm, just like that. And we're going to do that again three more times, just like that. Now that we're done, we've cut all of the wedges on the inside of our sun catcher. This little device is a four and a half inch aperture here. Now you can get different apertures that you want. This is actually one of the bigger ones for this uh, four to seven inch size range. This is, I think, the largest you can get is a four and a half inch aperture. And the reason why I chose the four and a half inch is just simply because I have a secondary mirror up here obscuring the central obstruction. I wanted the largest aperture because the center part of this is going to be obscured by the secondary mirror. So I wanted enough light to be able to really show me some detail. So once we're done with this, all we're going to do is slip it up over. Now, mine is going to fit very snug, and I purposely designed it to be snug. But the, that's the point. So if you get a little bit of wind or anything, it's not just going to fly off on you, and that's the point. Now, this telescope is able to look at the sun. Why don't we try it out? And let's see what it looks like. enjoyed that little tutorial of how to turn your telescope into a solar viewing telescope. As always, the eclipse is coming up here in less than a month, and I hope you can get out and enjoy the beautiful astronomical event that we have coming here on October 14th. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Clear skies, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.